All right. I got you, brother. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for connecting with me today. I just wanted to acknowledge you and say thank you for having the courage to be here with me right now. I feel like it's so important. And I'm just, I'm honored and grateful to have you. So what I like to do is kind of give you the heads up of what I was even planning and goal of today is basically to kind of share your story, spread the message of what can happen if you're not taking the proper precautions while you're tattooing. Because you know, you've dealt with it firsthand, like how bad things can actually go. Basically, a lot of things can manifest itself physically. I don't think we're aware that our energy, the environments, the kind of mental state, the atmosphere. I mean, we can go back to like, past traumas and also anxiety. I mean, there's plenty of things that are involved in this stuff that can actually make like a psychosomatic kind of a response within the body. So when you think that I worked so hard and I broke down, that's a simple version of what can happen. And when you tend to, oh, in my case, when you have time to stop or you're forced to stop, it's not just rehabilitation of the body. It's also rehabilitation of the mind because both of those go hand in hand. And if you want to get into kind of like, what does it all mean? What does this symbolize? You know, your spine has the energy points that will possibly give you some kind of answer or a question that you must answer. So, you know, like as for me, when I start to look at this stuff, I tend, I, I notice that my neck and that everything around from my voice to my heart were damaged, so to speak. It can come in the way of it being like, having to protect your heart and voice. And that stress in itself actually makes you kind of develop a tension that can, you know, push the injury even further. So I've been an artist pretty much my whole life. I've been a painter, muralist, long before I became a tattoo artist. So getting into tattooing, I wouldn't say was the, the end result or the actual cause of my injury, but it was part of the acceleration of my issues that I was going to have. I believe I was going to break down whether or not I was into tattooing. It was just going to take a few more years for that to happen. Now, uh, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. While you were painting and doing all of your murals and literally living your life as an artist, did you have any like... I look, self when I look back at my career, I, I noticed that there was hints that something was going on. And I also try to take care of that as much as possible. So I did work out a lot. I worked out for about five years and I, my back was the, or my, actually my shoulders, especially like my right arm, which isn't my dominant arm. My left arm is, is what I peed with within my shoulder area right here. There was a lot of tension. That I was, I was like, couldn't understand like, what's the point? Why is that even happening? It's like, it's not even the arm that I even use. What I came to find out was that it was my ballast. So as one arm was moving a lot, I needed to have some kind of foundation that was that, that, that held down my body. So this area was the ballast of this drawing arm. So when I came to that conclusion, I noticed that there was imbalances and I knew that I had to like work on my back because if there's one thing that I know is that it takes a lot of energy to hurt and that's not the way we're supposed to be living. And so when we make excuses about Oh, I don't have enough time to work out. I don't, I can't do this. I, I can't because I have to work a lot. That's the attitude of you saying like, but I can make enough time for me to hurt. And when you realize that it doesn't take that much to actually build strength within yourself, you, you tend to kind of come to the conclusion, like, why was I telling myself all these times that I couldn't, I didn't have the time or better yet, if you can't make time for your body, your body will make sure that it, you make time for it. And others that may not be, you know, beneficial to our livelihood. Yeah, know what you had planned. Heck yeah. Oh, man. God. It's being gospel right now, dear. This, you couldn't be more right. I mean, you are preaching to the choir. But like, yeah. man, man, you, yes, yes. And Mo, yes, dude. I feel it. And it's what you just hit on is like, I feel like one of the major internal limiting beliefs that I come across working with tattoo artists is that I'm busy or I don't have time for it. Or like when I give recommendations and I follow up, it's like, did you give it a shot? And it's like, oh, well, I got too busy at the shop. It's like, because you were busy, what's the reason you should have done it so that you would have had a better end result when you were done with your day? Like Friday the 13th, I've had a lot of people reach out to me after those 13 hour days. So to your point, I couldn't agree more with you. 
Yeah, I think one of the most important things that you also have to understand as a laborer of your craft is that intuition that you have inside your head. You should probably listen to it when it starts to invoke, you know, like to pay attention to me. Unfortunately, I saw all the signs, but I ignored them. I compounded those things by actually sedating myself to actually numb myself to kind of like the stresses that I was going through. Again, we could be our own worst critics, our own, our best saboteurs. And that little voice that tries to tell you, take care of yourself. Not the other one that says that you're not good enough. <laughs> All of us artists have that one. <laughs> yeah, you should listen to it. No matter what case, no matter where you are, I should have listened to what my body was telling me three years ago. And by the time I had come to the, well, actually, I didn't know that I, I, I didn't know how injured I was until um, it came in the form of me being tired and exhausted, mentally drained, waking up and I'm feeling like I don't have a purpose. Like, what's the point of all this stuff? You know, these thoughts were telling me like something was going on. I didn't know. There was no way for me to know at that point in time. All I knew was that I had to rest. I had to stop. And I did. And it wasn't until three or four months later that the actual conclusion of all these thoughts and all of what my body was trying to tell me had actually surfaced. And that's when I realized like, Okay, my subconscious knew what was going to happen. It just took me a few more months to figure it out for myself. Yeah, it's almost like and you were manifesting this culmination of all this stuff. Like you kind of stole some of the red flags or the road signs along the way. And yeah. then it's like it kind of came to fruition. Now, can I ask you, like, what it actually, the pimple popped, so to speak, or however you want to phrase it. Like, what was that? moment like was it like a severe pain where you're like i can't even lift my arm or was it just like uh i need to do something about this well that moment again like the moment itself was over a, 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 a couple years but i would say that i knew something was wrong about a year before because i had developed a slight case of tendonitis or medial epicondylitis which is aka golf elbow and it was manageable for the whole time up to the point where i had to stop and uh, I know it wasn't going away. I've dealt with it before when I was working out. And the only way to alleviate tendonitis is to actually stop, but I wasn't able to. So the only times where I would feel it is when I had a movement, a sidearm movement. So there was like shake when I was shaking my machine and, and letting the ink fall out, I could feel the tension in, in, in my, in my elbow. All right. However, the actual, that actual light, the actual physical point was when I had injured myself or I had ruptured that tendonitis on a mountain bike ride. And I knew at that point that, all right, this is something that is a little bit more now that I need to deal with. So that was like in October or November. And then it took about two or three months where the tendonitis was just getting out of hand. I was trying to like lay down on my work. I was like, all right, let me just do two days of work, three days of work. Oh, it ain't that bad. Let me fill it up again. I'm working four or five days now. So that, you know, that was January, February rolled around. And then I was like, I, I really got to like chill out. And so I was just practicing twice a week of doing this stuff. And then came the point to where the tendonitis was just overwhelming. It just felt like a, just like a hot piece of metal was just right on the tip. If you know anatomy, you know exactly where that is. If you dealt with it, you know that it comes right at this, like your funny bone, that point, that little, that, that crevice, whatever you want to call it, you know, the apex of your bone. Like, yeah, that's where, exactly what you're talking about. That's where the that. issue was. And yeah, that's, that's where the tendons actually connect yes. to that point. So it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh, well, we're talking about medial epicondylitis. Yeah. The yeah. But anyway, my, my, my deflection, the, the flexion part of it, you know, this kind of movement was what it did me in. And so by that time, I was icy, you know, after work, I was trying to massage. I was, I was gasping for air. You know, I decided that I needed to take a break. And I said, you know what? Let me get back to painting. You know, it was like, I got a few things I got to take care of for people. And I said, this can't be so, you know, intrusive to what I'm going through. Well, three hours into painting and I felt, you know, I felt the golf elbow starting to swell. And I was like, all right, this is serious now. All right. Now I know I kind of need to stop. Ugh. Maybe within two or three days, I'm trying to lay down in my bed, which is a brand new orthopedic bed at that time. And which was comfortable to begin with. I could just lay down and wake up. And that's how good it was. And then I realized, or my body was saying like, hey, my neck is hurting right up in here, right at the base of the skull. And the tension was so, so severe that I, I, I had to take the pillows out and lay on my bed. It's a medium firm bed, but even laying flat on there, I couldn't, I couldn't 
my neck was just like, I'm still agitated. So now I'm laying on the flat floor and I still can't get a good night rest. So now I'm putting a towel underneath my, my neck, right at the base of my skull to get a wedge in order to get, you know, to get my C1. And C2. Now that I know, I was like, in order to get my C1 and C2 back to normal. Because we're yeah, always we doing this. And now it's time to like, you know, get this chin back kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's when yeah. I knew, I was, like, I was like, all right, if I can't sleep, this is some really heavy deal, you know? And it just so happened that at that point, my fingers started to go numb. And my wrists were swelling. I was like, wow. It's like, I'm like, I knew mechanically, I was like, I'm, 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 I'm kind of fucked right now. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I had a friend who was a chiropractor and I went to him first, you know, and he took x-rays and he looked at me as though like, and honestly, his look was more discerning or more depressing more than anything else. He's like, dude, like, were you in a car accident? And I'm like, no. He's like, well, you're spine shows all of the symptoms of how people look when they're in a car accident. He's like, bro, is this like your spine is really out of, out of, out of, it's not centered. So my spine actually goes like this. And once it gets up to the neck, it's a pinball machine where it went like that. And it actually lands this way because my whole life I've been drawing, looking at my paper, the wall, looking at things sideways like this. And so this trapezius. Oh man, the amount of tension within this side was just had built up and finally it just went and it popped out. And that's when I had to look up all the alternative medicines because I did not, I had heard plenty of times before that they'll give you a pill in order to make the pain subside. Uh, there's the possibility of pain surgery. And I'm like, no, nope, I do not want my, 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 you know, my, my bones fused together. This is like, I, I need to figure this out. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to find ways. And so all in all, there was chiro, massage, acupuncture, and stretching. Now, each week that I was going through this, I had realized that if I was on my phone in the morning, like there was bad habits that I had picked up that I didn't know that were affecting me. So so I'm in bed, my hands feel okay. I'm like, well, let me check my phone and see what's, you know, talk to people. Just doing this with my fingers. And all of a sudden, my, my fingers are starting to go numb again. And I'm like, I am... I'm confused. I'm like, I can't do anything. So now I'm at the point where I'm not, I can't even touch the phones or I'm doing voice, you know, voice to message kind of the things, you know? And, and, and the one thing about chiropractors or the, about the chiropractic stuff, and please, anybody who's going to take this, just know that you're going to have to, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So the amount of discomfort that I was feeling after the adjustments, one of the, one of the experiences that I had is that I was really tired that I had to rest because my spine felt fatigued. And that's a really weird, weird thing to say, but it's a, you, you know, like if you, if you work out your biceps and you get to that point, you're like, ah, and, you, and you can't do it anymore. That feeling had translated into my spine and I'm just trying to walk, just trying to stay active of some sort. So I'm like, wow, I think I've never had this feeling before. Now I need to lay down. So for about a month and a half to two months, I was I don't want to say bedridden, but I had to lay down for those times and not, you know, I set up a, a TV, you know, with a, with one of the hooks that can, you know, that you can look at stuff. So I'm laying down with, with something right here in front of my face so that I could just let the time pass. And during that time, it's the humbling experience to stop because you develop this life all based on what these hands can do. And now that they have to stop, you have idle hands and you have a brain that's still working, trying to process what you're supposed to be doing and what you can't. And I think that has to be like a very scary situation, for, especially for somebody who has an overactive, overactive mind. As many artists do, a lot of us have that ADHD brain. It's like tattooing helps us focus and shut the world off. Yeah. I, uh, what I didn't know was how much I was hurting as far as mentally as well. So if we have all these feelings that we have as we grow up and we we tend to just push them to the side, they're going to manifest. Believe me, they're going to manifest. You think you're too cool that these feelings that you have and that you have them on lock and that you're a strong big man or, or I'm the, I'm, I'm a strong woman. Guess what? It's going to get you, you know, keep up that attitude. So what had to happen was as I'm getting these adjustments, as I'm getting pricked by the needle, as I'm getting these massages. I had tears that were coming out. I didn't know how much stress, how much sorrow, how much hurt 
that was inside my body that was being released. And part of this recovery is also having to be honest with yourself, setting healthy boundaries, you know, practicing self-care, not just physically, but also journaling as well, writing, you know, and these kind of things, I knew I had to do them, but I knew I had to wait because I had my fingers that it needed to heal. So I'm telling you, every day was a practice of self-care, which is resistance, a resistant band training, all upper body. And not only that, but having to work on the core. So doing a lot of core exercises that didn't involve my neck. So there was no head movements that were going that way. So this is like doing dead bug, dead bug. You know, core, I, I don't know the proper words for it, but you know, this, yeah. if you're going to start off healing yourself, you're going to have to realize that it all starts within your core. And the stronger your core is, the better base that you have for a spine. Yep. You know? That kinetic chain. You have to have a, we call it that you have to have distal mobility. You have to have proximal stability. So like, yes, yes, yes. So can I ask you, did you go to a physical therapist as well to like get the upper extremity rehab? Or were you only going to a chiro, massage, and acupuncture? I was fortunate enough to also know a physical therapist via phone. And I saw a couple of physical therapists here. I was kind of like, I kind of, I studied anatomy enough to be aware of the antagonist and protagonist muscle groups. Ooh, yeah, that's a big, that, that's a powerful concept that you just mentioned. Most yeah. people want to understand what that is. No, I mean, so, I mean, when, when you think of protagonist and antagonist, it's part of a story of a storyline, right? Well, guess what? Your body is the story. Your muscles are telling are telling you the actual, the narration of what's happening. You got to be aware of both your flexor and your extensor muscles that, that are happening. So when I had tendonitis, I knew that there was a lot of this kind of movement that was going on. What had to happen was that I had to work on my extensor muscles as well, because these muscle groups right here are being overtaxed because these muscles aren't working. So these guys are working double overtime and thus they're getting fatigued. They're breaking down a lot quicker than what you possibly were imagining. Yeah. And so I'll just put one more point to that for anybody that might hear it and still not understand. It's almost like if your bicep flexes your muscle, your tricep extends the elbow. Like think of the elbow. The bicep bends the elbow, the tricep extends the elbow. That's the agonist. That, that's that concept that we're talking about. So yeah. sort of like make it as real as possible because you're so right. With our flexor muscles, they're actually like three times as stronger than our extensor muscles because there's more on them. Yeah. So it's like, to your point, that's, yeah, it's very similar to like when people have a stroke, they actually curl up in this position because of the tone that develops from this stronger muscle. So yes, yes, and more yes. Yeah. So as I'm talking to my physical therapist, they're kind of leading me on into certain stretches that I may have missed out on that I didn't really logically allude to, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's like, why didn't I think of this? How come I didn't practice this on the first month when I started doing all this stuff? So as I'm recuperating and rehabilitating, I'm also coming to the conclusion that every week it feels like my first week of rehab because I'm adding another thing to help in the process of me healing. So there's mass. So not only am I getting massages, you know, once or twice a week. I mean, it was pretty sturdy. I'm, I'm actually getting acupuncture, like, or not anymore, but I'm get, I was getting acupuncture twice a week, getting a massage, you know, twice a week. I mean, I was burning through money. This is, this isn't something that our medical system really cares about, about you. It's like, well, we can give you a pill, but that's about all we're going to do. Meanwhile, you know, some of the things that we that actually needed aren't covered by healthcare. Not at all. Can Especially I ask you? Yeah, if you're so right. So can I ask you, like, if you were to like, look back, like if you had a genie in a bottle, right. And you can tell your past self something, like, would you have started with therapy? Like, from the beginning, if you could have done that? Are we talking about preventative or are we talking about actually going through it? It's a loaded question. So like preventatively, like for example, if you were to have, a if you were to have had access to, these are what can go wrong as an artist and this is what you can do to prevent it. Do you think you would have taken advantage of it? Number one, that's the first question. Like and when you're it, feeling good and resilient. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, don't really, you don't really think about it. So the first thing I was gonna say is that when you're young, you, you think it can't happen to you, but it is happening. It's just happening at a pace that is definitely slower than what you imagine. It's not a car crash. We're, we're in like a, a 20 year car crash. You know what I mean? And so you, you don't see like what's happening at that point in time. I, I didn't see this thing as just like, oh, it just happened to me right now. I, I knew that this was, 
this is my head leaning forward for over 20, you know, 20 to 30 years. Okay. This, this yeah. is me being in this position for that many times. So I guess like if there was a, a wishful thinking is like somebody could have said like, you need to fix your posture, you know, and would have been on that. Or like but the real implications of fix your posture. And this is the reason why not just yeah. fix it because it's bad. Right. right? And, and one thing I need to, 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 to clarify really well is that like to have a perfect posture is, is it, it is a daily exercise. This isn't a, a, a perfect posture. Doesn't mean that you're, that you're resting and everything's fine. You know, like if I'm, if I'm resting, this is what resting is. If I want a perfect posture, I have to be aware at all times that my, that I have tension in my belly, my glutes are, 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 are in check. My shoulders are back. My neck is up. My neck is back. My chin is up. That is a different way of thinking now. Now you're being conscious. So as a robot, we're like this. Now that you become a conscious human being, you have to be aware that like at all point in time that I have to be aware of where my spine is at all time. So as I'm sitting down tattooing, I'll naturally want to be closer to my work. And then you'll just see me like bring my back, my, my back shoulders up. I see you have a new chair. I, I have one of those as well. Those things, yeah, those things work. And a lot of people said like that new chair is like what seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, whatever, you know. And uh, oh, that is way too much. I don't. I I could get another you know chair for whatever half you know fraction of the price, hundred dollars, fifty bucks. I don't know why. Why do you guys need that? Well, if, if you're sitting all the time and sitting as part of your career, part of your livelihood, do not give yourself excuses and invest in what is going to make you money. So seven hundred dollars, whatever. It's a half day. It's a full day. You know. I could pay that off in one day. What's the big problem, you know? Or let me just save up enough because this is going to help me long. I'm going to be able to to survive a lot a lot more than 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 what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and can I just mention one thing about the new chair? Most people actually don't understand, in my experience, like what the real benefits are. And a lot of people were like, "Oh, well, this is front support." Well, honestly, it's not. It's about the pelvic tilt, which is yeah. the most important because. What it does is that the base of the chair, for anyone who's never used it, actually tilts forward, which is allows your pelvis to have an anterior pelvic tilt, which pushes yeah. your lumbar spine forward, which helps to push your chest forward, which helps to keep your posture better. And the added front core support is an added benefit. So when you're forward, your core isn't taking a back seat to the stability so this gives you that external stability over time because no matter what like to your point steven you're going to get tired regardless fatigue sets in so this support compensates for that internal fatigue would right. you agree with that oh yeah for sure just make sure you tell people what that anterior means going forward yes the anterior <laughs> yes because a lot of people believe it or not have this posterior tilt where our pelvis is tilted backwards because we're yeah. sitting in these chairs with our forward round shoulders, forward leaned head. Yeah. So it's, it's like a, this whole per perspective. I talk about the waterfall sitting strategy in my master class. And it's like literally how it opens up the front anterior portion of your hips to like have better alignment, better circulation. And people yeah. with comorbidities like lymphedema who tattoo, that's even more important to not cut off that circulation by sitting at 90 degrees at the hips, which yeah. is not, not a not, ideal not. position. I believe the, what, what the pelvis is supposed to be between 39 and 42 degrees, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, one of, the, one of the models that I use is like waterfall sitting and it's 135 degrees of like a hip extension, essentially. I can, show, I can post it in this video when we talk about it. But yeah, it's like, 135 of hip extension essentially so it's it's interesting and having the new chair promotes that and most people don't understand they think it's this support that's not what the real benefit is another as 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 we've been talking about stories and tension in the muscles and and past experiences past injuries as well i think it's also important to share that our muscles have an incredible ability to hold on to trauma and to hold on to past experiences. Now that could be an accident. That could also be childhood trauma. It could be, you know, unfortunate and un unfortunate situations that, that have come about within our lives that we need to now carry with us. 
So if, if you're going to rehabilitate yourself, understand that the muscles play an important role to how our spine is, is reacting. So if you're going to get adjusted, if you're going to get your acupuncture, you're also going to have to get those muscles. You're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to need, you're going to, you're going to have to let those muscles, a catharsis, I should say, you know, to, to, to emotionally dispel a lot of these memories that you have within your muscles. And again, so when I said that in the beginning, when I was getting my treatment, I was crying a lot. Those were my muscles releasing all of that tension that I had built up within my entire lifetime. Because over the last year, I had never had so much body work done to me. You know, it could be an intimidating thing. Luckily, I didn't know what I was in for. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, because if you do know, you're, you probably be a lot less gun shy because like, I do not want to walk through this door because I know what's on the other side. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, people, this, this, this stuff, this, this physical illnesses that we have, they're, they're manifestations within here. There are manifestations of the experiences that we have. And, it, it, and it's up to, it's up to you to figure it out because no one's going to do it for you, you know? And there, there's no classes for that. You know, there, there's, there's, there, there's no kind of emotional strong suit that's gonna, that strong suit that you thought was helping you out. It's kind of like a, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a shackle and you're going to have to be vulnerable. You're going to have to be vulnerable in order to go, you know, to get through this stuff. Damn, man. That's so, that's so powerful. It's so powerful to say that. It's so true. It's mm -hmm. like, and you're lucky enough to have had a friend who was a chiropractor to serve you yeah. and bring you along the path because so many times I've seen this business model of healthcare where it's like that revolving door, you know, and it's like, you need me lifelong. And it's like, but you know, the truth behind the adjustments are exactly what you said. If you don't manage the muscles that are pulling everything out of alignment, you can it's get adjusted right every day of the week, but it won't do anything. Yeah, you're going to be wasting a lot of money if you're not getting these muscles taken care of. And, yes. and, and, oh. and this muscle right here is also part of it as well. Yeah, that emotional, psychosocial, like chronic pain cycle that you keep addressing yeah. it's so true it's like once you get into that mindset of like oh shit this is getting bad this is getting worse what am i going to do i'm not going to be able to work coupled with the, the past traumas like like opening a doorway to that tough guy persona that is the shackle that yeah. is holding people back that's stopping progression in the industry as a whole it's like I don't know if I ever told you this, but, or you heard the story that I have, but when I first started out in this career, this journey, trying to serve the industry for the health perspective wise, I met this guy named John and he was an apprentice at the time. And he was taking some of my advice and putting it into use, but like he'd stretch and they'd like make fun of him. Like his homies in the shop or he'd buy new equipment and they called him bougie and hate on him to the point where he wouldn't take care of himself. And he came back a year later to me with carpal tunnel syndrome. And I'm like, knowing it wasn't him, but there was a bigger issue, the stigma in the industry. It's like, yeah. I'm too cool to take care of myself. Or I took a bunch of painkillers to feel better and I only had one hour of sleep uh, last night. Yeah, it's cooler to take pills than it is to actually, you know, face what you got to face, you know what I mean? And another thing to add on to what you said, you know, unfortunately, it's just, you know, sheep need a shepherd, you know, but as human beings, we don't need a shepherd. We do that ourselves. And it's unfortunate that we tend to follow the pack versus living, you know, being authentically or vulnerably present in the present moment, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you want to break it down even further, man, it's, you know, you know, creativity will suffer because of that kind of thinking. You know, it's, it's true. It's not a, it's not something that I'm, I'm, I'm making up myself. I've seen it. I've, I've seen the ego destroy creativity. I've seen, I've, I've seen vulnerability be as magnificent as strong and, and bold than anything else. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing how this world works. I couldn't agree more with you. I couldn't agree more. And it's just like an homage to you for being here and sharing your story and your message to help more people because that's the goal. That's why we're here. That's why we're chatting right now is to convey this to somebody who might think, I don't need to take care of myself or the person that's already dealing with the issues and doesn't know what to do or where to go or how to find help. I want to hear your opinion. Have you found that like going through your journey to like recover that you were getting bad information from anybody. I found like in my experience, yeah. some healthcare professionals don't even understand 
what bloodborne pathogens are or what tattooing even is. Yeah. I mean, I was fortunate enough to know of a chiropractor for over 10 years. So I got to see his, his journey go through. Some of the people that I follow or some of the people who follow me tend to be healers themselves, you know, and uh, I remember there, my, there was this one acupuncturist, she's in the South Bay and uh, she, she's a very, she's a very good hearted woman. And uh, I kind of knew about her, but when I needed to find the answers, I had noticed that uh, she had posted something about acupuncturists or acupuncture practices being used by the Black Panthers in order to chill out heroin addictions. So that was kind of like the hook of like, all right, this girl's aware, like on, a, on, a, on another level of like what's happening here. Let me hit her up. And, and unfortunately, she was like, I'm all booked out, Stephen, but I can give you the contact information to my master who taught me. So I was kind of fortunate enough to know people who knew people that were, who were, they got their information from. I, I think in massage, that's a little bit tougher because there's people who say that they have strong hands and they don't. Or I would hope that they are aware of the mechanics and can say like, you know what, you say your, your pain is happening right here, but it's actually right underneath your scapula. This is just a fire or this is just a smoke in your neck. The fire is actually happening you know, around your rhomboids, you know? And, you know, so, I mean, there again, it's like the rhomboids, they, those need to be worked out a lot because that's where you're going to get your, your shoulders to actually come back or actually your spine to get, get, get into more proper position. So the massage thing is like, there's a few people that, that I see. And right now one of them is injured or is just kind of take, taking the time off. So I'm kind of like, man, you know, I would really love to have you work on my neck. So what I have going on is like my C7, C6 and C5 are compressed. And the one thing that the muscles are doing, since they're so tight, they're bringing those vertebrae, you know, closer together. So yeah. it's very important for me to actually have to local to have a local massage within my neck area in order to help relieve pressure. Another thing that I do is actually use a general tool that was recommended to me by my chiropractor. That's the, uh, let me see if I have one. Yeah, I got it right here. That would be uh, this thing. And this goes right, ah. goes right behind my neck. Yeah. And it provides traction. Traction would be uh, getting your, your neck to go in the right way that it does. So when I use this thing right in the beginning. I have something. Yeah, it does, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. These, oh, yeah. these are what I sell in my toolkits for all yeah. the tattoo artists that or go, everyone that goes to my master class gets a toolkit and I provide everybody with one of these. So I yes, yes, I couldn't agree more with you, dude. You're you're on it. Yeah. So and you know all the muscles also. Yeah. You've been impressing me. I have to say, you are the most well versed artist I've ever met because you've had to deal with learning what was wrong. So it's like I have to commend you. That's like fun. you you know it, dude. You yeah. you on it. Yeah, thank you. Part of my 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 background in education was actually studying the body. I, I've lost a lot of my specific muscles that that I used to know, but I'm still aware of like groups and you know so far as what we talked about. So it actually helps to talk to your body workers in the form of knowing what anterior, posterior, lateral, medial, superior, you know, and inferior. Knowing those kind of words within the body definitely helps your body worker. You're pretty much you're pretty much talking card talk to your body worker when yes. you know keywords that they're aware of, you know? Yes. That's one of the things I think is so empowering is if like, for example, for somebody to go into a body worker and say, I need you to work on my scalene triangle, the anterior portion of my pet. I need you to release the tension because this is what I get. I'm at risk for thoracic outlet syndrome. And these are the areas that you need to address. And they go, oh, okay. Because yeah. most of those massage therapists, what we're talking about is like a higher level complex issue. And in their six month program, they don't learn any of the complex injury stuff. So having that knowledge as an artist is one of the things I give in my master class because it's like, how else can you serve yourself or have somebody serve you if you don't need, know what you need? Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's an important, it's an important aspect of talking about anatomy. I mean, that's how doctors talk. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's how I talk to doctors. That's how I talk to other therapists. And the way that you frame it, like you're using card talk, like yeah. it also gives you as the artist or anybody, the, the consumer of that body worker, it makes them value you more because it's like, oh, this person understands so they're going to pr provide a better service for you yeah. like 
because they're like, oh, well, if I don't provide what he's asking for, they're going to know. They're going to know right away and believe me. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's part of like the massage thing is that uh, there's some people who are naturally aware or are good at it. And there's other people that just go through the motions. And you could tell, I could tell right away when someone is just, just being like, I'm going to treat this person just like everybody else who has a, oh, my neck is sore. Well, there's not that everybody has the same neck soreness. They, it, it may feel like it's all within the same area, but there's certain, there's, there, there's certain ways on how it manifests. And you got to be, you, you have to check yourself out first. So if you have a pain up here, try and actually figure out, is it, hold on to it, and turn your neck to see whether or not that tension is released or if it's actually manifesting down your spine a little bit. It could be happening down your thoracic versus it actually, you may think that it's actually in your cervical. You're so right. Oh, I actually wanted to ask you, have you ever seen like the ergonomic massage tool stuff that I have? I have a multitude of um, here. This is my favorite one that I have right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very similar, basically. Right. This one is just like more contours to your hand. I there's love all kinds. To, yeah, there's all yeah, kinds. I'd love to send you one, yeah. actually, and see sure. if you can like do some trigger point release and some traction with it to see if it benefits you. I'd love to send you one if you send me your address. I should also, I can't believe I forgot this. One of the most powerful healing things that was done to me was Gua Sha. That was the actual, oh, and I'm talking, me. and I, I mean, this lady took me through the ringer. She's really good. She worked on NFL players and NBA players. And so like I was recommended to her and uh, she had mentioned, and what was really interesting is that we both read the book, The Body Keeps Score, which talks about trauma with, within the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember her telling me like, you're going to need to yell in order to let this stuff release. And I thought she was bullshitting me. And it turns out by the time I was literally yelling at the top of my lungs, and that was part of like the cathartic experience that I, I was supposed to have. And by the time she was done with me, it looked like I was in a fight. My whole, my whole shoulder girdle of my neck, I had the biggest hickey ever, you know what I mean? So yeah. to speak. And it was, I was all inflamed. I had to take cold showers for like the next week in order to make sure that all of those things that were released, the, the rat, the free rat radicals did not soak in because I hear that once you get a massage or once you get a really intense massage that you need to take cold showers. I, I still don't know and why. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And lots and of water. Lot, yeah. This, yeah. This is including drink a lot of water. But that was one of the biggest leaps in my recovery in the beginning. And even before I had even had to come to a close because I was hurting so much that I saw her and, and she did such a great job that she actually bought me about seven months more of time before I realized that I had to stop. Yeah. So, and for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about, it's basically the most legitimate form of cupping. It's like where cupping came from. It's where they actually use the glass jars and use heat or flame to create negative pressure and then put that on you rather than like the pumping negative pressure, which is not as effective and which is like an Americanized, modernized yeah. version of and what that's what we call cupping today. Yeah. Also, for acupuncture, you know, there's different styles out there, but my doctor, he does dry needling. That's, yeah, right. that's dry the needling is that, the, a whole uh, other thing. Yeah, the, uh, that's, that, that's the American title for it all. So my, my doctor, he's, uh, what's, how do I say it? He, he's an actual Chinese practitioner who actually went, went back and his version is, uh, God, lancing the belly of the muscle and actually uh, turning the needle and moving it around. And when I needed to have my trapezius massage, that little needle really twists the trapezius muscle. And I'm just like, oh my God, like you're really in, inside, you're inside that belly of the muscle and you're telling it to chill out. Yes. So yes. Uh, it's a physiological for anybody that's interested in what we're talking about. Physical therapists can do dry needling as well. And it's literally like a needle with nothing in it that they insert into the muscle belly, literally a needle into the muscle. And it physiologically, it has like an acetylcholine dump. And that dump is basically what takes all this tension and just relaxes it. And it's like, we don't really understand a lot of the physiology involved, but it fucking works. Yeah, so, so the two other things that, uh, again, uh, so we had uh, the massage, the acupuncture and the chiro, and then the fine tuning, the fine tuning was the gua sha. Or the gua sha was the actual the first the first remedy that I took, and now I'm I'm tapering it off with dry needling. Those are the things that we don't well, we're not aware of, and I became privileged to because of what I had to go through. It's powerful. Your story is really really powerful, my dude. It really is. I feel like you would have such an impact. The more that you can share your story, can I ask you like 
how long do you think that you're off of work? Like, was there a time frame? It's like I stopped working and then started oh, yeah. again without yeah, days. I, I will never forget the day it was March 6, 2022. That was the last piece that I did. And I had to stop because I had to tell the guy like, hey, you know what? I know this is your first tattoo, <laughs> but uh, we're going to have to stop here. I'm going to take you to a point to where it's going to be easier for me to, you know, to, to start again. Yeah. Trust me, my guy. And I, this is going to take this. And I knew it. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to have to take at least about three or four months off. But trust me, I will take care. All right. I'm going to need this time, though, because I believe me, I'm, I'm aware of like this isn't this isn't just a week off. I'm going to have to take some serious time. Yeah. And yeah. I came back the second week of September of last year. And so when I came back and I've heard this, a lot of people who were, I was actually talking to another tattoo artist about this. Coming back, you're, you're scared because you're going to go right into the actions that actually took you out to begin with. And now you're like, again, it almost is like you're, you're waiting for this to happen. You're almost manifesting and you're like, oh my God, my elbow's acting up again or my wrist. Well, why is my wrist acting up? It never did that before. It's like, Damn you, it's like I took six months off and now my wrist is the issue. Then it turns out like it, it, was, it was a matter of that little muscle that's, that holds your radial and, your, and, the, other, and the other bone together and it, it, and it helps within this motion right here. So there's a little pronator teres. I, I know it's a pronator. Pronator teres is up here. Are you talking no, about your flexor, it, flexor retinaculum? It, there's a little one right here. It, it might be it, but there's a little training that helps within. Supinator. Exactly. If that's it right there, then, then that's the one. And the, the stretch that I needed to do was put this up against and, and push my elbow out and that alleviated the stress. So again, as much as I was trying to take care of all the muscle groups, there were still muscles that I was missing out on. And thus it's like, why didn't I figure this out in the beginning? So there's still learning that I'm doing as I'm going. And, I'm, and, and the only kind of, I don't want to say resentment, the only kind of I wish was that all this information that I know now, I wish I was able to practice it on day one. You know, who, yes, who, knows, how, yes. who knows how soon I would have came back, but it, it would have been nice to know that from day one, I was able to be 100% with the rehabilitation. Oh, dude, yes. So now let me ask you this. Do you do day rates? Do you do hourly? Like, how do you, if you're comfortable with me asking, I'm just curious, like, do you, how do you normally like do your days? What does it look like? I usually do either half days or full days. I don't do by hourly. And, uh, and I, and now the thing is, it's like, I'm at the point of where a quarter sleep, I'll just break it up into two days. I'm not really into like, I got to max out my product for the day. That's, uh, it's, that's, that is so far removed from me. The only thing I want to do is like, honestly, like the word that I use is the bare minimum is happening right now. I'm not trying to do. I'm back, baby. Like, let me do this. Oh man, dog, I got this. I'm, I'm the shit. You know, I'm, I'm doing this tattoo stuff again. That's, that's, that's not, that's, that's not even remotely what I want to be doing right now. The only thing I want to be doing is to take it easy still, you know, ease myself back into this. From what I understand, this could be from one year to two years, you know? And, and then luckily I, I, I had enough savings to weather the biggest part of the storm. If I, if I didn't, you know, this system would have ate me out alive. You know, yeah. I, I would, I would have been in a world of shit if I, if I did not have the money in order to do this. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. A lot of people do, they have to stop working or stop tattooing altogether. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you, what do you charge for your day rate? Quarter sleeves can manage anywhere between 25 to 3000. Uh, it just depends on, you know, if, if I'm doing custom work, custom work takes a little bit more of drawing, hand drawing and stuff like that. And, you know, photorealism using stock photos, that, that's, that's the easy part. <laughs> got you. Got you. Oh man. Well, I want to be cognizant and like aware of your time. And we've already been on for like an hour. I just, I feel yeah. so honored and grateful that I was able to share this time with you and that you felt comfortable enough to share your story with me and whoever is going to watch this. And I just, I hope somebody gets something out of this to the effect of self-care matters. What you do today is going to help your tomorrow and having some basic fundamental what can go wrong will save you in the long run of how to avoid it to begin with. Like every other profession kind of tells you what can go wrong and why except yeah. the tattoo industry because we were so guarded for so long and they're has been no legitimate like 
standards across the industry. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say if you want to find some kind of parallels with other careers, you said two artists should probably talk to dentists because they are next in line with you guys as far as dealing with these same issues. And the only, reason, I, the only reason why I know this is because dentists, you know, you, you meet dentists at these body, at these body, at these body things, you know what I mean? And you're just like, ah, oh, okay. And you realize, yeah, you're doing the same thing that I'm doing. Dude, and they you have don't know this? I, I never told you. And for anybody listening, I did not tell Steven this. All of my research that I use for my programs are from the dental industry. Yeah. In 2017, there was a study that correlated the performance skills, what it takes to do a tattoo and what it takes to have cl to clean teeth are the same. It's just rad tattoos at the end of one of them and clean teeth at the other. So it's like, it's so funny because I've used tens of thousands of dollars of research taken from the dental industry, reapplied into my program. Right on, man. Yeah, yeah. It makes... It's crazy. It's so interesting that you say that. Ah, it's so and it's empowering. It makes you feel so good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if again having the time to to heal, you you start to pick up, you start to read, and you start to understand. Like this is this is not this is just not a me thing. This is happening to a, a, a lot of people. Actually, at eleven o'clock, I have I have my Pilates. So again, there's the uh, working on the core aspect that you have to be. You know, as much as you have stuff going on here. You're going to have to take care of that core and Pilates. I do twice a week that along the bicycling as well. So I, I am making the, the strides to make sure that I'm going backwards, you know, I'm going backwards. Oh, so powerful. I want to like run you through my master class and see what you think about it. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Hell yeah. Do you have any, before we get off, do you have any questions for me or anything lingering that you wanted to ask? Um, I guess, uh, how, how long is your, how, how long have you been, I mean, did, did you suffer an injury yourself? Or is, this, well, is, that, is that what got you on here? Well, believe it or not, actually, I've been in the tattoo industry for like, since I was 18 and now I'm 34. I lost my dad when I was young and, you know, like how that goes, kind of like found friends in the tattoo shop, kind of got into some drugs and shit like that. Oh, yeah. And then realized everything, everyone that was hurting and all my homies that were like literally walking out of the shop, going to the bar rather than taking care of themselves or popping Percocet or Oxy or whatever it was. And I was actually on track to go to massage, be a massage therapist. And then I realized that there was more to it. And it's funny because I actually, I was dating a girl that got me out of that scene at the time, thankfully. And I got into OT school. So I became an occupational therapist. So I actually started traveling the country for a few years doing therapy. And when I was in California, I was working at a traumatic brain injury unit and I was getting sick of healthcare in general. And one of the guys I treated was a tattoo artist who was in a brain injury unit because he was skateboarding after he took painkillers because he was hurting from tattooing. So he was in pain. He was taking perks, was skateboarding fell, hit his head, and I met him in a brain injury unit. And that was what started my journey of like, damn, what is actually going on? Yeah. And then like, I started in ergonomics, which is my company in 2018. And at that time, it was like a hands-on doing therapy for people. But I was hitting the wall. I realized that my one-off treatments weren't doing enough. And I realized I needed to have a bigger impact. So for the last few years, I've been working and building and developing a program, which is 12 weeks long, that incorporates all of the ergonomic aspects that tattooers can put into place from the dental industry. The yeah. therapy from, because I'm a th rehab professional, I was a hand therapist. So all of the therapy and exercises you can use and the formulas to heal yourself, to think like a therapist. And then basically overcoming this mindset shift of internal limiting beliefs that we don't have to do it or I don't need it and the value of it. So I kind of created this 12 week masterclass to develop these habits into long-term lifetime routines. So it's like, oh, this is what's wrong. Oh, let me follow the formula. Let me take care of it before it gets wrong. too bad. And I'm finally launching from a one-on-one -on -one class to a group course in February. So I'll actually have my first group 
program launched to serve more people and give them the information that we're talking about right now. Well, it sounds like you're doing all the heavy, the heavy work and, and giving all these guys, the, you know, the road to success. And, you know, that's, that's, uh, you're doing all the heavy lifting so they don't have to, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's true. And it's like, it was crazy because the more I let, you know, clarity comes in the doing, right? Like the more you started in your journey, your rehab journey, it's like, oh my God, all these things that I'm learning. And I kind of the same thing for me is I realized there is just nothing out there for tattoo artists to kind of like use as a baseline or a fundamental to say, oh, this is what can actually go wrong or this is how I help myself to stay out of the business model of healthcare. Because like you said it, like if you didn't have the money to go through all of this, like what would you have even done? Like, that, and, it, would, it would have been game over, man. Yeah. And it's it's from a therapist over. perspective or a healthcare perspective, it's easier to 10 out of 10 times, it's easier to avoid an injury or an issue, a work-related repetitive strain injury than deal with the rehab. It's cheaper. It's more cost-effective. It's related to your quality of life. So it's really like in the scheme of things, if we have a little bit of information can save thousands of lives. It's like what I'd said. It takes a lot more energy to hurt than it is to, to practice self-care. And yeah. It'll, yeah. Manifest, it'll manifest itself in ways you cannot believe on both sides. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. My God, you're right. And it's powerful and it's true. And it's just like, oh, it, it's kind of like that mentality. It takes more muscles in your face to frown than it does to no. smile. <laughs> no. No. But it's so like, it's there. And if we can like give in my eyes the way i look at it is like my dream is to shift the global tattoo industry like how i couldn't think dream of anything bigger than going for the whole world and like if we can start here in the u.s and it spreads out if we can just give out some information that's going to help one person then it's fucking worth it yes it is i this appreciate manly, you and i value this manly, my guy man, this manly man has to go to pilates Good. Be about it. Normalize it. That's what this is all about. All about normalizing this conversation, normalizing yeah, yeah. doing this self care. So, Stephen, I value. I appreciate our time and our communication. Send me your address so I can send you with some goodies. All right. Thank you very much, boss. Light and love, friends. A pleasure. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.